Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Broken Sword 5, The Serpent's Curse, where George has gone off to some sort of hidden room behind the fireplace, and now Nico needs to find a way into this library, so... It was the library door. We know it's locked. Um, I don't know if there's a key somewhere. The, the guy said he lost the key when he was drunk. The door was locked. I'm not sure if there's... I had to find the key. Yeah, I'm not sure if I there's... I wondered where Ramon could have hidden it. So it's a good question. The plants, at least, were thriving in the rubble. See, so yeah, there was all this rubble before. I, d I don't know if there's a way we can, like, lift any of that up or anything. I mean, it, it could literally be anywhere, this key. It's a mosaic. An intricate mosaic adorns the floor. Uh, is there anything else we can see around here? The roofs? The castle was vast. But most of it was now inaccessible. Okay, most of it's inaccessible. What have we got here? We've got the press card and we've got the mock. Can we literally just pick the I mock? I needed to find the key. No, okay. Um, and there's nowhere else we can go to. So we've got the library door. I mean, unless he went somewhere the other way, of course. As in somewhere outside. Although there is drink here. There was a crate of brandy amongst the mess in the Great Hall. Apparently Ramon drank them all. Must have been some night. Okay, so there's all the brandy. There's a bookcase. The bookcase held old Catalan books. I wouldn't be able to read them. So there's that. Uh, this shield... There was a row of shields displaying heraldic symbols. The scroll under the shield read, Tramp. I don't know if that's going to be important later on. The hall had collections of old items everywhere. Ramon claimed he had tidied the place up. <laughs> well, that's, uh... You know, that's up for debate. See, um, I, I, I suppose... Hang on, let's have a look. Oh, there's the tree there. The fireplace was adorned with carved trees. And yeah, apparently the clue was actually the sundial outside for how to um, position these. So it was east and west, but you used the where the sundial was pointing to figure out which way is east and west, which I completely missed. <laughs> so there we go. Um, what's this way? Nothing. All right. Is there anything else he can tell us? So you have no idea what you did with the key. All I remember is waking up in the old car. Ah, there we go. Fine. So it was outside. So let's go to the old car then. Ah. Our friend the goat has moved. Fantastic. An old apple tree provided shade. Shame that the goat's rope wasn't long enough for him to enjoy it. Are we gonna have to do the same sort of thing here? No, apparently Nico can just walk past the goat. It appears that it's just George the goat doesn't like. What is all this? An old pair of shoes. Shoes. The floor of the car was littered with keys from sardine cans. Okay, there's a blanket. Someone had been sleeping in the car. But long, long ago. Okay, there's a pillow. Oh, a book. I picked up what looked like an old diary. It was Ramon's. Huh. The library will forever be a shrine. No one will enter. I shall hide the key in a safe place. Once I've eaten. I have just what I need and know what to do. Oh, beautiful lady, your eyes are so blue. I just can't stop thinking of you. Hmm, Ramon was quite the budding poet. Our lives are entwined like ivy on a tree. That is what you mean to me. Nice. Oh. Hey, I was reading that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no more of that, apparently. An old and very dubious pillow. We've got these bottles here. Another brandy bottle? Ramon really went for it that evening. Surprised he was able to um, stand up the next day. The dashboard seemed intact. 
But this old family car would never drive again. Okay, we can't do anything with these. A 5D71. Extraordinary. Alright, so it seems like he went to eat. And I don't know if that poem was a clue. Come, but maybe he... Have you no respect for great art? Goat. Ready in digestible, huh? <laughs> Goat's regretting it. A pile of old apples. Looked like the goat had been eating lots of them. Ah, uh, the goat hasn't The eaten. goat had been tethered. Seemed unnecessary. The gentle animal wouldn't have harmed us all. <laughs> unless you're George. Um, unless the goat, of course, ate the key. A heap of old brandy bottles. Ramon must have been in the car on that night all those years ago. I don't know. Anyway, let's head back. Maybe we can remind him of the fact he went to eat somewhere. Let's see. Oh yeah, here we go. I just had a look at that old car in the garden. Looks like someone slept in it. Me. When I returned, I couldn't bear the house at night. So, I slept in the car. All right. So, you have no idea what you did with the key? All I remember is waking up in the old car. Hmm, okay. So where would he have eaten? I mean, there's no... There's no, um... No kitchen or anything, as far as I can tell. I mean, unless there's another area we've not been to. It's a wind chime. The wind chime looked like it was made from old cans. I wondered if it was Ramon's handiwork. Oh, potentially the food? Despite the scrap components, the wind chime was beautiful. It was uncanny. One old sardine can was bulging slightly. I fished around. There was something in it. Ah. Did he hide it in there? And there it was. Yeah. The key to the library. <laughs> in a tin of old sand sardines. Fantastic. Might want to give it a wash first. We found the key, bro. You'll never guess where it was. Do you know Eva well? No. I only just met her. Senor Marquez brought her with him. They don't talk much, but... She knows how to handle a gun. All right, well, uh, guess we just head and open the library. It wasn't too difficult to find that, I suppose. Just had to piece together the clues. Pretty funny that the goat seems to like Nico and hates George. Let's see what's in this place. Ramon had been true to his word. This place was like a shrine. I'm called in like a hidden door or something here. <laughs> Somewhere. It's gotta be, right? A globe sat forgotten in a corner. I wondered if Marquez had played with it as a child. Yeah, maybe so. There's a trunk. Tapestry. There's a desk with a chair, a suit of armour. And a picture frame. Start with the bookcase. The books were still stacked neatly in the bookcase. More were scattered on the floor. Okay. Let's have a look at this trunk. Oh, it's open. The trunk contains someone's personal possessions. At a guess, Genans. I wondered what secrets they might hold. Mm. The hat looked battered and old. I wondered if it had belonged to the mysterious Genans. Very possible. Oh, a map. We'll take that. The map had interesting markings and scribbles all over it. Huh, so it's all... George would be so jealous. It's all different... Like, towns and stuff. So, what is this place, senor? It is my family's chapel. It's not like any chapel I ever saw. Where's the altar, the crucifix, the Christian symbols? 
And this fresco, what's that? How extraordinary. It tells a story. It depicts the journey of my ancestors, the Cathars, and their escape from the hilltop fortress of Montsegur with the Tabula Veritatis. From under the very noses of the soldiers of the Albigensian Crusade. Whoa, wait, wait a minute. Who are the Cathars? And and what have they got to do with the tabula? Yeah, fill us in. Whoa. The Cathars were Gnostics. They lived in the south of France in the 12th century, at peace with the Jews and the Catholics of the Languedoc. They preach that men and women are equal that God is within you, and that the church is an obstacle to salvation. The Pope found their core beliefs abhorrent. The Cathars accused him and his church of corruption. He condemned them as heretics. When the Pope learned that they were the guardians of the Tabula Veritatis, he conspired with the King of France called for a holy war to wipe them out. The Albigensian Crusade was a callous, ruthless massacre. The final confrontation took place here at Montsegur in 1244. The Crusaders believed that they had slaughtered all the heretics, but a handful managed to escape with the tabula. They traveled south across the Pyrenees along secret trails. They brought the tabula here to Catalonia to be hidden once more. Interesting. So I'm recognizing a few of those shields, I think, from around the fireplace. Sadly, it was not the end of their trials. The Spanish Inquisition saw to that. Nevertheless, for generations, my ancestors continued to guard the secret of the tabula. So, you understand why La Maledizio is important to me. It will lead us to the tabula again, so we can keep it safe from those who wish to abuse its power. I see. The painting brought us up here, Senor. We need to find out why. I'm guessing something to do with the shields in the picture, but let's have a proper look around. It was a candelabrum holding a single candle. Okay, so there's a single candle there. Uh, doesn't look like we've got anything over on this side of the room. We've got a statue of some windows, two lenses, which could be interesting. Obviously, we've got the fresco in the background. Uh, it's a bit of a crack here. It looks like we can go back down as well. So let, let's take a look at these statues. These are the ones from the... It was a large marble statue of a young man holding some sort of colored glass lens. These statues... They're the ones from the painting again, aren't they? What of them? They're just like the figures in the painting. And on the fireplace. Indeed. They are the two pillars of the Gnostic faith in harmony. And the bearded one is Yahweh, Jehovah, God of the physical world. The other is known by many names. Helel, Ishtar. He is the bearer of light. Luxfere. Lucifer. Interesting. Lucifer? So, you guys are devil worshippers? No. When he is in balance with Jehovah, Lucifer is the god of desire and ambition, driving humans to be inquisitive, to discover, to advance. Just as Jehovah, when he is in balance with Lucifer, is the god of order. Jehovah stands for selflessness and altruism. Gnostics worship the harmony of both gods in balance. But what if one were to rule without the other? If Jehovah ruled without Lucifer, then Individuality would be surrendered. Mankind would be wholly conformist, mindlessly dependent. Mere pawns of a controlling power. And what if Lucifer ruled without Jehovah? 
Ambition and desire would be transformed into unbridled greed, and man would lust only for wealth and power. Society would descend into chaos, disorder and war would prevail. Then, Lucifer would be the devil indeed. Hmm. Okay, so, a little bit more about the Gnostic faith there, which is quite interesting actually, and I'll tell you what, we're going to find out more about that next time, because we are out of time for this one. So as always, thank you very much for watching, a big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, Hobo, Numinous, Coomadin, and Paul Leone, and I'll see you next time.